Now that we have the ESCs wired for power and going to the motors, we need to get these uh, small signal and ground wires going somewhere. And the setup will be different, slightly different for both of these multi-rotors. So let's go ahead and knock out multi-rotor number one, because this one will be actually be the easiest. And then um, multi-rotor number two will be slightly different. With the Dodo and its custom PDB, uh, because the PDB has these uh, pins that are going through the flight controller for motors one to four and power and ground, uh, whenever we wire the signal wire, instead of soldering this wire directly to these pins like you normally would on any other flight controller, this wire will actually go in between the main power and ground on this small pad here. Well, there's one on every corner. And instead of uh, pulling my wire like this and cutting it to size, uh, what I actually do, because whenever you crash through tree branches, they tend to snag these wires, I like to wrap it around something to uh, you know, ensure that it doesn't get pulled out by tree branches. And if you are going to wrap it around a wire, you want to do it around the ground wire, because if you do it around the power wire, uh, that will actually affect your signal in an, a bad way. So I'm just going to wrap it around the ground two to three times. Then holding this in place, I will cut it where I need to. I'm going to strip some of this jacket off. Then tin my wire. And if you haven't already tinned the pad, go ahead and do that. Then take this and solder it right to that pad. And that's it. Now for the ground wire. Uh, there's been a long debate of whether or not you need these ground wires. And testing has been done by many people, very reputable people. And the tests show that the ground wire actually does help. So I always use my ground wire. Uh, now the next question is, well, where should you put the ground wire? Like I said, on most flight controllers, uh, because they don't have their PDB set up like this, you run the signal wire to the output pin on the flight controller. And then you would run this ground wire to the ground pin, which is usually the pin on the edge. But there is really no need to do that. And I'm not just talking about this situation. I'm talking about any situation. I never run the ground wire to the actual ground pin on the flight controller. It just has to go to a ground. So I typically just run this to a ground on my PDB. And it can be any ground on the PDB. And in this case, uh, this doesn't have a separate small pad for the small ground wire. I will just run this right on top of my big ground wire. Then strip some of this wire or the jacket off and then tin the wire and then solder it right on top of the big ground wire. So they're going to share the same pad. And for this flight controller, that is it. You are done. It is now technically soldered into the PDB, but it is connected to the flight controller because they're both connected into one. So let me do that three more times and I'll be right back. And here we go. So whenever I told you guys that this was going to be a clean build, now you're starting to see exactly what I was talking about. And it's going to get even better once we add in the camera and video transmitter. So now let's talk about multi-rotor number two. This one is going to be very similar in the sense that the small signal and ground wire will be mounted in the same way, except for it's not going directly into the flight controller. It's going into the PDB first. This PDB includes this connector here, and then we will plug this into the side, and then these wires will actually go to the flight controller. So let me go ahead and knock out this first part because you've already seen it done, and I'll be right back. There we go, all finished, and the setup was just like the last multi-rotor, and I have the ground wire shared with the same ground pad that the big ground wire is using. But now we need to finish this one up. Uh, so take this harness that came with the PDB, and we need to figure out which way it goes in, and it's going to be with the flat part on top. If we look closely at the PDB, uh, there's also wires for motors 6 and 5, which we are not using, so we can go ahead and remove those wires which are going to be these two wires on this end. You could just cut these wires off, but I'm actually going to depin it because if you depin it, then it keeps the connector on the end and you can save these wires for later should you need it as a spare. To do this, I'm just going to stick my razor blade 
in and lift the tab up and pull the wire out. And then for the second wire, which will be motor number five, just like that. And I'll just keep these off to the side and save them for later. The PDB also has wires for ground and five volts, should you need five volts to power your fly controller. The Omnibus fly controller has its own built-in voltage regulator, so we technically would not need that five volt wire or five volt power from a you know, separate power source, but I will be using it, and I'm gonna explain why in the next video. But for now, let's just worry about the uh, ESC wires. So if we plug this in, this is the front of my multi-rotor. And normally, this would be the front of the Omnibus fly controller. But, like I said, this thing is hitting the voltage regulator, so I am mounting mine backwards, like this. Because of that, I will actually run these wires underneath the fly controller, and then solder them on just like this. Actually, I'm going to solder them on from the back side. On the Omnibus, this pin right here is for the SBUS and PPM pin for your receiver. And then this pin right here is motor number one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. So all you want to do is take these wires, let's just say motor number one, which will be the third wire, which is this guy right here. And wire number one, it needs to go to motor output pin number one which will be this pin right here. <clears throat> I'm trying to make this as not confusing as possible because I will be doing this from the back side. So I'm just gonna take all of these and measure them out and then make my cut. So this should be more than enough. I'll just clip them all right there and then solder them in motors one to four, and I'm gonna leave the five volt and ground pins off for now. We'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, so like I said, S bus one, two, three, and four. I did it from the back side, so one, two, three, and four. Doing it this way will allow me to plug this fly controller in, and then face it backwards, and there we go. Now all my wires are underneath the fly controller, and all clean looking. One tip I have though is uh, keep in mind if you did turn this PDB, say you did not want your battery leads going out the rear, you wanted it out the side, well look at where your uh, ESC signal wires are going, there's a number on all of them. So you got one, two, three, and four. So with the battery leads going out the rear, this is already in the correct orientation because uh, this is motor number one and this is motor number two and so on and so on. But if you were to turn this, motor number one would be here, and then two, and three, and four. So going by this chart right here, these numbers would be incorrect. So you would have to rethink it and uh, figure out where they actually, what these numbers actually are. You know what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind. But if you just want to keep things simple, just put the battery lead on the rear and not on the side. That would just, you know, headache free right there. That does it for this one. The next video I will talk about powering both of these fly controllers.